Welcome to the Fire EXF and Fire e Pro Server version 6.3 update technical overview. This update provides you with added functionality and improvements in the areas of color, productivity, and integration. First up are the improvements in the color capabilities of Fire EXF and Fire e Pro Server. This update includes version 4.9 of Color Profiler, which, among other improvements, will allow you to create much smoother CMYK profiles for EFI Matan, Reggiani, and ViewTech printers. In addition, a new multicolor profiler has been enabled for ViewTech HS100 Pro and HS125 Pro printers, the EFI Wide Format H1625RS printer, Epson SureColor P7000 and P9000 printers, and the Mamaki TS300P-1800 printer. The Fiery Pro Server and Fiery XF version 6.3 update will include the revised ISO DIS 12647-7 2016 standard for contract proofing. To support this new standard, New tolerance limits have been added to the color verifier preferences for the media wedge, chart, and spot color specifications. Two of these tolerance presets, the media wedge and the spot color presets, will be available on the target tolerance preset drop-down menu on the verify pane in Fiery XF client. For these new standards, the default delta E calculation method is CIE delta E 2000. Use the Fire EXF exclusive dynamic wedge feature to automatically print a color bar which will include all of the spot colors contained within a job for verification when using the new spot color standard. In Fire EXF 6.3, we have greatly improved stochastic screening, SE2, with smoother and sharper results enabled for all EFI Matan, Reggiani, and ViewTech printers. Updated advanced ink limit algorithms will provide you with improved shadow detail and depth as well as a strong resistance to inversions to ensure that there will be no umbrella effect and no tone reversals when working with EFI Matan, Reggiani, and ViewTech printers. To aid in this improvement, we have refined the advanced ink limit chart for EFI Matan and ViewTech printers to aid in the visual assessment of proper tone distribution and have provided a new target for EFI Reggiani and the EFI Fab Review printer. This target has small extensions on each patch to help you detect ink bleeding on textile materials. In the 6.3 upgrade, we are adding or updating the extended gamut coded FHI Cotton TCX and TCX2100, Fashion Home Plus Interiors TPG, solid coded and uncoded, and the color bridge coded and uncoded Pantone libraries. With the Fiery XF 6.3 update, we are introducing an often requested feature, the ability to print your own spot color swatch book to demonstrate what selected spot colors will look like when output on your printer using your ink and your media. To use this new feature, select the spot colors that you would like to print and then click on the new Print Swatchbook icon located on the right-hand side of the bottom toolbar. In the next window, select the printer and media combination that you would like to use to print your swatchbook, select your desired patch size from the drop-down menu, then your desired page size for your swatchbook, and then click Print. A swatch book containing your selected spot colors will be created and spooled to the appropriate Fiery XF workflow for printing. In Fiery XF 6.3, you will find a greatly expanded set of tools to set the black generation options when building ICC media profiles for EFI ViewTech, Matan, and Reggiani printers, as well as Epson SureColor 7000 and 9000 printers, and the Mamaki TS300P-1800 printer. On the Profile Settings panel, you will find default settings available on the Settings drop-down menu, and you can modify these settings by clicking on the Edit Black Controls button. In the next window, you will see four new tabs containing all of the Black Generation settings. First up is the Black Control tab, and the first control on that tab is the Maximum Black Ink Slider. 
Because black ink is limited by the calibration or .epl file, it is likely that you will always keep this setting at the maximum 100 limit. Next is the black start setting. If your printer utilizes light black ink, you may want to set the level lower. However, if you only have normal black ink available, selecting a higher level will keep small dots of dark black ink out of highlights and quarter tones. Also keep in mind that moving the slider to the right will increase your ink usage. Black generation is often referred to as GCR, gray component replacement, and is used to replace the neutral components of mixtures of cyan, magenta, and yellow ink with black ink, reducing your cost. The final option on the black controls tab is black width. When the slider is moved to the left, it limits the amount of black generation that you have set to neutral tones only. When moved to the right, you are extending GCR through non-neutral tones and eventually into more saturated colors, again decreasing your ink usage and cost. On the advanced black controls tab, you will first find the ink amounted black controls. These three sliders can be used to limit the amount of cyan, magenta, and yellow ink used at the black point of the profile. Below these sliders, you will find six additional sliders used to control where black ink will be added to create darker primary colors. Moving these sliders to the left will start black ink later, moving black ink out of saturated colors. The third tab is used to set options when using the perceptual rendering intent in your color transforms. The first drop-down menu can be used to boost the chroma or saturation of your output by 10 or 20 delta C levels. Next is a slider where you can lighten or darken the overall output from your printer. Immediately below the lightness slider is a control to increase or decrease the contrast of the output from your printer. Finally, you will find a shadow lightness control used to lighten shadows by 2, 4, 6, or 8 L-star levels. Caution should be used as it is possible to produce slightly washed out shadows. The last tab is used to set additional processing options. The first option is used to add smoothing to your measurement data, used if you suspect that your data contains noise and does not accurately reflect the characteristics of your output device. Immediately below this slider are two sliders to add smoothing to the output side of your media profile. Here you will find separate controls for the perceptual and the colorimetric tables. And finally, you will find four controls that can be used to modify the size of the input and output perceptual and colorimetric tables. Increasing the size of the tables may provide increased accuracy, but will also increase the time needed to produce color conversions. Next, we will explore the productivity improvements provided in the Fiery XF 6.3 update. We are introducing a second model of ProServer, the Fiery ProServer SE. A lower cost solution, the ProServer SE will be the default ProServer for a select group of EFI printers and can be used to drive only a single printer. A small spacer under the server itself is the only visual difference between the two ProServers. With the introduction of the ProServer SE, the current model is being rebranded as the Fiery ProServer Premium and includes the same options included with the traditional ProServer model. Also, to enhance the data safety of your system, all new ProServers will be shipped with a RAID 1 configuration instead of the existing RAID 0. Please note that current ProServers cannot be upgraded to a RAID 1 configuration. A number of new features have been added to the Fiery XF 6.3 update specifically for EFI Reggiani printers. On the special tab in the Fiery XF client, you will see an option to mirror the complete job. This option differs from the mirror option located on the layout option pane. The mirror complete job feature will mirror the footer and any selected color bar in addition to the graphic itself, where the layout option feature will only mirror the graphic. For Reggiani 1 and Pro printers, you will see an option to rip a job to the full media width. Enabling this option will add blank pixels to a document to bring the width of the document to a value that equals the full width of the media to push the tickling line on the Reggiani printer onto the transfer belt. 
For all Reggiani printers, enabling the maximum compression option will apply the highest amount of compression available. Disabling this option will apply the fastest level of compression. This is a speed versus file size setting and is especially useful if you regularly output files over 2 gigabytes in size. FireEXF 6.3 will read the print parameters file from the specific Reggiani printer that you are printing to. Because of this, when building a linearization file, you will see that only the available print modes will be displayed for the selected ink that you will be using. Changing the print mode to select a different ink set will automatically update the available print modes. Starting with FireEXF 6.3, because of productivity issues, we are limiting the use of the dynamic smoothing option to pro servers running with FastRip enabled. You will also find that the performance of your FireEXF and Fiery Pro Server system is improved when using the nesting or the step and repeat options. Now let's explore the integration improvements that have been added to FireEXF 6.3. First, we have added support for 46 new printers from EFI, Epson, HP, Oki, Durst, Mamaki, and Seiko. For a list of the supported printers, please refer to the EFI website. You will find that iCut support has been improved in version 6.3. For iCut support for the iCut IPC front ends production center from ESCO, users will only need the .cut file and not the additional .ai file. Support has also been added for the SUMA F series cutters. A rip and print on the fly feature has been added for use on the EFI wide format H1625 printers. This control will allow you to set the percentage of a file that needs to be processed before the H1625 can begin printing. A new method of connectivity has been added to FireEXF 6.3 for use when sending files to an EFI Matan or Reggiani printer. When connecting FireEXF to a Matan printer, you begin by selecting the File Output option for the connection type on the Output Device Connection Pane, and then enter the network path for the Matan file server along with the appropriate username and password for the server share. Click on the Test button and you should receive a message reporting that you have successfully connected FireEXF to the Matan file server export folder. Please note that the Choose button, as well as the entry fields for username and password, will only be editable on the FireEXF client that is installed on the server machine. On remote clients, the information will be displayed, but it will be grayed out and the button will be disabled. To connect FireEXF 6.3 to a Reggiani file server, on the connection pane for the specific output device, you must enter the path to the folder on the Reggiani file server that contains the print underscore parameters folder. Do not select the print parameters folder itself, but select the containing folder, often labeled Reggiani. After you have entered the network path to the print server folder, enter the appropriate username and password for this folder into the XF interface, close the FireEXF client, and restart the FireEXF server. Please note that this step must be performed using the FireEXF client installed on the same computer that FireEXF server is installed on. After restarting the FireEXF server and relaunching the XF client, click on the Test button on the Output Device Connection pane. A window should appear informing you that you have successfully connected to the Reggiani print server. Next, switch to the Special tab and check the values shown in the Print Underscore Parameters Folder Status section. If you have successfully connected to the Reggiani print server, the text Valid Folder should be displayed. If Valid Folder is not displayed, refer to this chart located in the Reggiani Supplement document located at help.efi.com slash fireexf for a solution to the problem. Starting in FireEXF 6.3, the default connection method for many newer EFI printers will now be Print via IP Network. This includes the HS100 Pro and HS125 Pro printers running printer software version 2.0 or higher, 
and the GS series, QS series, and H2000 Pro printers running printer software version 4.1 or higher, along with the HSR Pro, LX3 Pro, Jetrion 49X0LX, and wide format H1625 printers. IP printing eliminates the need to manually import files, reducing errors, improves the organization of files through the use of workspaces, standardizes repetitive tasks, and communicates real-time job status back to FireEXF. Printing jobs via IP protocol allows you to access some print options on the ViewTech print station allowing control of these options by the FireEXF operator. This can reduce or even eliminate the need to define these settings on the ViewTech print station, giving the printer operator more time to focus on printer setup, loading the required substrate, and ensuring the quality of the printout. On the special pane, with the traditional file output options selected, you will see a very limited list of options available. However, if you connect via IP network, you will see a greatly expanded list of options that you can set. Ensure that the connection type for the output device on the connection pane is set to Print via IP Network and enter the IP address for the ViewTech printer. Click on the Connect button and you should see a message confirming that you are connected to the printer along with it displaying the device status and a ViewTech integration version which must be version 1.6 or newer. Please note that if you want to take advantage of the benefits of printing via IP network on an existing printer setup, you must first disable all outputs to that printer in FireEXF, including the linearization device, and switch the outputs to print via IP network. Failure to disable the outputs may result in a licensing error. Starting in FireEXF 6.3, you will have the ability to add new custom workspaces and set the parameters on the ViewTech print station directly from within FireEXF. Using workspaces is a more efficient way of managing jobs instead of saving RTL files and folders. It is like a print queue which contains all jobs the printer operator has to print on a particular day or on a particular substrate. Workspaces can be controlled from within Fiery Pro Server and Fiery XF for the HS100 Pro and HS125 Pro printers with printer software version 2.0 or later, all GS and QS Pro printers, as well as for the H2000 Pro with printer software version 4.1 or later. In Fiery XF 6.3, we have made it easier to move jobs between printers without having to re-rip the file. In this example, I have FireEXF configured for two printers. Both are HS100 Pro printers, and both utilize the same calibration set. This is important as you can only move a file from one printer to another if the two printers are the same model and use the same calibration or .epl file. Once the file has been processed, to move it from one printer to another, simply right-click on the job in the job list, and from the pop-up menu, select the Move to Printer option, and then select your alternate printer from the list that appears. Finally, we will examine issues related to the FireEXF 6.3 update itself. First, you must have a new FireEXF 6.3 version license installed on your system before you upgrade your software system. If you have a valid software maintenance and support agreement in place, you will receive an email with your updated EAC code. If you did not receive this email, or if you do not have an SMSA in place, contact your EFI dealer. The update installer will check for a valid 6.3 license and, if there is not one present on your system, the update will not be applied. We have added a direct link to the EFI Online Help Library to the Help menu in FireEXF Client. Here you will find a number of helpful documents along with numerous printer supplements providing you with printer specific information for the use of that printer with FireEXF 6.3. This completes the technical overview of the Fiery Pro Server and Fiery XF 6.3 update. Thank you for your time.